Film is not dead. Do we have to keep talking about it? <laughs> On this episode of Developing Process. Before we get started with this week's episode, I have three contest giveaway winners to announce. So these are the winners of the contest we started two weeks ago uh, to give away three darkroom contact prints from 8x10 film. And to enter the contest, you had to uh, subscribe to my channel first, then uh, comment and share one of my videos anywhere online. So I went through very carefully and um, verified all of the entries and then compiled them into a list and had a random number generator randomly select three winners from the list of qualified entries. And drum roll, the winners are Maurizio Fizi, I hope I pronounced your name right, Alexander Matragos, and Marco Fantin. So congratulations to you three. I'll reach out to you on the comments and then um, you know, try and reach out to me on email, justin at justinlowry.com, or you can use the form on my website, lowrylandscapes.com. I'll put a link in the description uh, and send me your mailing address because I need to be able to ship those prints out to you. So without your address, I can't do that. So I need you to send me your addresses and then we will get those in the mail. Before we get started, I do have one other cool announcement, which is that we finally have are hitting the 4,000 hours of watch time today, uh, which in YouTube's system is the other metric I had to reach. So coincidentally, on the day I announced the contest, we hit the 1,000 subscribers, more or less. And then today, on the day we're giving out the prints, um, announcing the 4,000 hours. So that means that you guys have spent 240,000 minutes watching my videos, which is pretty awesome. And uh, what that means is between the two of those, I can get into the YouTube partner program and that will allow YouTube to pay me for making videos, which of course at, at this point is gonna be barely significant at all, like a few dollars here and there, but eventually that will matter. And so it's cool to be able to get into that program. Also, uh, <laughs> It's really important that you guys subscribe to the channel. So hit the subscribe button. I know you'll still see the videos in your feed, uh, even if you don't subscribe sometimes, um, because YouTube will suggest them. But if you don't tell YouTube that you wanna see my videos by clicking subscribe, they think you're only sort of interested in watching them for a short time and then they're gonna recommend them like less to you and also less to other people. And so it kind of demotes my videos when you don't subscribe. And according to the statistics, 70% of you are not subscribed to this channel. So that means you're watching the videos and you're not subscribing. And I just want to encourage you to subscribe and come on for the journey and watch some videos long term because I think you'll really get a lot of value out of it. So that would help me out a ton if you guys would actually click the subscribe button. Also, I noticed like some of my friends, I don't see their videos in my feed, it's really annoying. So uh, what you can do is you can hit the notification bell beside that subscribe button and it will, it'll tell you whenever I upload a new video and you can do that with anybody's channel. Um, but that is beneficial too because a lot of times YouTube like will fill up your whole feed with the whatever you've been watching in the last few days and then like people that you really enjoy watching but you haven't watched in a few days will get buried and then you just won't see their videos even if you really like them. Like that happens to me with people that I like to follow. So that's something else to consider. So the topic of this week's episode is hashtag film is not dead but do we need to keep talking about it? And what I mean by that is if you spend any time at all on social media watching, um, looking at photography, especially analog photography, um, you're going to see these hashtags like hashtag film is not dead or hashtag save film or film is alive or, you know, um, whatever analog hashtags. And I just kind of think it's funny and ironic. A late night talk show host actually said like a few weeks back, he was like, imagine if you walked in to go have surgery and then the surgeon said, I am like really smart, trust me. 
you'd be like, oh shoot, I better get another surgeon because like if he has to say it, it's probably not true. <laughs> and I kind of get that feeling with film, like people are all paranoid about it going away. Like the way I look at film is, you know, painting is not obsolete because photography exists. Vinyl, people still who are really into music and audio still collect and listen to vinyl. Analog instruments like guitar, acoustic guitars and grand pianos haven't gone extinct because we have synthesizers and keyboards now. Manual transmission cars haven't gone extinct because we have automatics. Film is just another way of doing photography. It's another form of creative expression. It's another tool in our toolbox. I feel like whenever we obsess over which tool we use to create our work, we place an undue emphasis on the tool itself, which then gets taken away from something that the emphasis should be on, like creative expression, visual storytelling, creating a cohesive portfolio or body of work, creating projects, etc. I guess the, the best example of this is, you know, I've talked to several of my friends lately and they'll, or people in the comments here, and they'll say, you know, a lot of people we see on the internet shoot film, but then, it's like all about the camera and all about the film. And so they're like, yes, I shot a large format camera. And it's like the pictures are so boring and not interesting at all. And they're just ugly and poorly composed and they don't tell a story and there's no meaning behind them and there's no artistic merit. And they may be technically razor sharp and perfectly exposed and they've used the right film and the right lens and the right movements and they got it developed at the best lab or maybe they have a dark room and they did everything right and they checked all those check boxes but the work itself doesn't have merit it doesn't have gravity it, it's it's like empty work and when we do that that's not doing film any favors because all that's doing is is placing so much emphasis on the tool that we've kind of let the work slip if you're trying to say to your friends or to other photographers, hey, check out film, it's awesome, I love it, but then your work is like boring or not worth looking at, it doesn't really make your argument because it makes the argument hollow. Basically, like the best way to convince someone of something is to show them through your life that it works. Show them your lifestyle. If you go on a diet, change the way you eat, and then you're visibly unhealthy and you're gaining weight, you know, having all these health problems, people aren't gonna wanna go on that diet with you because they're gonna be like, dude, it doesn't work. Like, obviously it's not working for you. Why is it gonna work for me? But then when you see like someone who's gone on the diet and it's amazing and they're totally ripped and they're in, in perfect shape and they're so healthy and they have so much energy all the time and low stress and you know all of their like vitals are just amazing and they're in, running marathons and stuff you're like oh see that's something i can get on board with because it manifests in their life it shows through that it shows that it works experientially. If we wanna share the way we do photography with people, then the photographs themselves have to convey the meaning. They have to have merit. They have to be strong images. We have to be excellent curators of our work. The images have to be more than just technically perfect. They have to grip you in your soul. They have to grab you emotionally. They have to tell a story. They have to be beautiful or or thought provoking you know or compelling in some way and you know i guess some examples of that would be photographers like nick brandt you know i've talked about his work uh here before inherit the dust you know this is uh one of nick brandt's uh, works and um it's a autographed copy that i picked up at his exhibition in hollywood and it's just a really amazing uh, body of work that tells the story. Should I show you some more? Um, you know, it tells the story of Africa. And so like, for example, the cover image is a picture of an elephant portrait. It's a portrait of an elephant he shot on a Pentax 6-7 on black and white film. And then um, he uses only short focal length lenses, like portrait lenses. So he has to get close to these elephants and get to know them. And then he printed these out billboard size and then put them in the landscape 
in a gigantic industrial landfill uh, or dump rather uh, with all these uh, people living in poverty picking through the junk to find scraps of food or things they could sell just to subsist and, make, and stay alive. And the elephants had been killed off by poachers, a lot of them, at the time he made this project. And then towards um, the end of the book, he has the tusks and stuff. But the work, the work in his books, it, it's 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 got gravitas, you know. Um, okay, like this is a good one. Um, so in this scene here, you have all these um, homeless people and orphans on the street, and they're all um, sniffing glue and trying to get high and stuff, and they're living in absolute poverty. And then there's a picture of a rhino, and if you know anything about conservation, you know that these rhinos are going extinct and there's hardly any of them left over there. Um, and what he's showing is that, what he's showing is that unsustainable development practices uh, are bad for the planet, bad for the wildlife, and bad for humans. Like, it's destroying people's, um, people's livelihoods, it's destroying communities, it's wrecking havoc in people's lives. And he's showing that it's not just like just the earth, just the animals. It's everyone who's just being negatively impacted by these companies and the stuff that they're doing over there. And he shot all that on film. So is the work good because he shot it on film? No, he could have shot that work on his iPhone. He could have shot it on phase one medium format. He could have shot it on a DSLR, mirrorless, whatever. He could have shot on micro four thirds. It's not relevant. What's relevant is that the work actually matters. The work is having an impact. You know, he started a nonprofit uh, that is actually saving these elephants, and then he's actively working over there to try and make impact and make change uh, through his work by drawing attention to these issues and then actually raising money and going and doing something about it through different foundations that he started. So the work is great because Nick is a great artist and he has a vision and that his vision has actual relevance and meaning in the world. And he's creating change and impact through his work. And then you see how great his prints are and you see how amazing his images are and his visual story. Then storytelling. And then you want to know how did he make this work? If you're a photographer, we all get curious about that. But do you see if his work had no meaning, if it was hollow, shallow work, and he's just out photographing cats in his backyard, I don't know. Or if he's just messing around taking test images of test charts and seeing how sharp his lenses can get, taking meaningless images to have fun and use his cameras. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if you want people to care about your work or how you created it, you've gotta create work that's actually got meaning and that actually is good and has impact and impacts other people. And then of course people will begin to care about you know the other stuff like how you created it. But it's not even that relevant at the end of the day. Is film worth saving? I personally think so. I love film. I think it's a great tool to have. I like, I think that if you're a photographer, a creative artist, it's better for all of us that we have competing options for how to create our work. So if we have large format, medium format, small format film, digital, micro four thirds, mirrorless, iPhones, if we have all these different ways to make our work, um, I think just like in any economy, you know, that competition drives progress, it drives quality, it, it uh, you know, provides options for people and gives us choices in the marketplace. And I think that that's a good thing. So I don't think it would be good necessarily for film to go out of production because we're going to have fewer options and nobody wants to be forced to use a particular tool to do their work. Um, we like having choices. But if we want to perpetuate film or any way of making images, the best way to do it is not by using fancy hashtags on the internet. The best way is to get out there, put boots on the ground, do the work, create the images, share it in the form of projects, prints, zines, books, etc., and really uh, show that the 
the photography can, can really matter. And then of course that will drive adoption of, you know, it'll make people be inspired to become a photographer. It'll make people become inspired to find out how you created your work. And that is how you impact real change, not by just using goofy hashtags on Instagram. And so <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the hashtags, guys. You wanna use the hashtags, knock yourself out. You know, of course film is still around, great. Now what are you gonna do with it? I think that's the closing thought. If we wanna save film, let's get out there and use it. And if not, that's great too. But the most important takeaway from this video is create meaningful, great work that's going to be appreciated, that's going to be impactful, that's going to have meaning. And that is the best thing we can do for our photography and for photography as a whole. I'm Justin Lowry, this has been Develop and Process, and until next time, stay curious.